In this unit, I want to talk about pattern formation. And pattern formation connects to one of our main questions from this course, namely what properties and processes are easy to obtain through physical dynamics alone. So what we're really interested in here is how much structure and patterning does the natural world, the pure physical laws, give us without any living process? And how might this natural patterning make it easy for certain types of evolutionary or lifelike processes to begin? Um, and the way we'll talk about pattern formation today is through the lens of reaction diffusion equations. Um, so here's a very simple reaction diffusion equation. Um, and what it does is relate the rate of change of some chemical U to a diffusion term plus a reaction term. Now this diffusion term is just some diffusivity times the Laplacian of U. Um, and I want to remind you that the Laplacian is just the sum of uh, the second derivative, second spatial derivatives, um, of u. So if we had two different spatial dimensions, it would be the second partial derivative of u with respect to x plus the second partial derivative of u with respect to y added together. Um, and what these second derivatives really are, are in the case of diffusion, can be thought of as this difference in fluxes. And so if you're looking at a point, um, this second derivative tells you the difference in fluxes, which will, will tell you the rate of change at a particular point in one concentration, in, in one uh, chemical, for example, U. Now, looking at this other term, F, what this is really doing is trying to describe um, the reaction of U everywhere in space. Um, and so this reaction could be because there are sources of U, because there are sinks of U, because U has some natural um, decay rate, um, all of which uh, could be put in in an equation like this um, to balance or interact with um, diffusion in some interesting way. Now, if we say reaction, we should often be thinking about um, the interaction of multiple chemicals. Um, and so we can make this a slightly more complicated but still fairly general by thinking about the interaction of two chemicals, U and V, where each have this diffusive term. And now we add these general equations um, of F and G which simply describe how U changes in time dependent on the concentration of U and V everywhere in space, and G does the same thing for V. Now let's take a look at a specific reaction diffusion system. There are many famous sets of equations that give rise to interesting pattern formation and which have been studied in detail. The system that we'll look at today is this simple set of reactions. We have two chemical species, U and V, that interact together, where when one U interacts with two V, the reaction produces three V, and V at some fixed rate goes to an inert product P that doesn't interact with either U or V. So this is simply a decay term for V. The equations describing U and V are as follows. The rate of change in U is negative U times V squared. So this is when U interacts with 2V, it is lost, and so this is a flux out of U um, into V. And then we've chemostated this system, meaning there's some constant flux into the system and out of the system. So we have some inflow of a fluid that contains U at some constant rate F, and so this is the rate of change in U should then be proportional to this flow of U into the system F, and then since there's outflow from the system, F times U is a loss rate. And so that's why there's this F times one minus U term um, that represents both the inflow of U and the loss of U um, from the system given that same flow rate. And then finally, we have this third term, which is the diffusive term. So this is a diffusivity constant D sub U, which is specific to how fast U is able to diffuse in the system, times the Laplacian of U, and so these are the two spatial derivatives with respect to x and y, in this case second derivatives um, of space, uh, that, that describe the overall diffusion of U um, within this system. We then have a very similar equation for V, where the rate of change in V now is this positive UV squared term. So this is the loss of U um, reacting with V to give 3V is now uh, a positive increase in V for, for that equation. Um, we have this same outflow from the system F, so we have a minus F times V term, 
And in addition, we have this extra loss of V due to its decay into P, which doesn't interact with either U or V. And so K times V is that loss term. And then finally, we have a very similar um, diffusive term for V, where the only difference is this diffusivity constant D sub V, um, which is specific to V. This set of equations, as we'll see in a second, gives rise to very interesting spatial pattern formation. And we'll look at that in terms of the parameters of F and K. So we'll look at different combinations um, of F and K and what um, parameters uh, they give rise to. Um, we could also look at the diffusivity constants, which we won't today. We'll simply focus on F and K. Here is a very nice interactive simulation provided by Dirk Brockman. Um, and we've put links to this website um, on the course um, web page. So if you'd like to uh, play with this yourself, you certainly can. Um, what's interesting, and we won't go into the details of this, um, is that using stability analysis, you can determine the regimes of F and K where interesting patterns um, form. And so you can see in the top right, um, we have this FK space where we're picking paired values of these parameters. Um, and this red region is sort of the generally interesting region um, of different parameter combinations. On the left, you see the concentration of U, um, where the red tones are low concentrations and the gray tones are high concentrations. Um, and given this initial condition, which are these large blocks, we can see um, what sorts of patterns form. So you can see that those initial um, blocks smooth out very quickly. And then in, for this combination of F and K, these long tentacle-like structures um, start to form. Now, eventually, these tentacles begin to run into each other. And for this particular combination of parameters, we get a steady, stable structure um, that forms at the end. And what I mean by that is that these tentacles aren't propagating through space. Um, there aren't large oscillations or, or waves propagating in the system. And we get this steady state um, pattern. What's very nice about this is it tells us that in a very simple uh, chemical context um, where we're combining simple chemical reactions with diffusion, we see this very interesting um, pattern formation with very strong spatial gradients, for example. So high and low concentrations of U and V are separated by only very small spatial distances. Um, and we see segregation um, in this system. And so this tells you you can get very distinct types of chemical composition very close to one another um, in this spatially segregated um, situation. Now this gives us hope um, from an origins of life perspective for being able to get very complicated chemistry um, forming next to other complicated chemistry over small um, spatial scales in a way that's stable and segregated. Um, in another part of this parameter regime, you can even see uh, that you begin to form these little cell-like um, features, some of which even um, appear to divide. And in this case, you don't get a, a stable final structure. You get these oscillations and divisions that um, propagate for a long time. And so these are the beginnings um, of a replication-like uh, process in a system that doesn't require very complicated chemistry. And so it may be easy, um, in some cases, uh, to get some of the basic features of life um, simply from the combination of spatial physics um, and a little bit of chemistry.